My guest today is Matthew Mitchell. He's an amazing photographer and he's so many other things. Uh, he describes himself as a creative force and I think that's a pretty accurate description. He's a really fun guy. I totally enjoyed this podcast episode with him and he's now in Palm Springs. He was in LA for decades, but now he's here and we're gonna call him our home. I want you to welcome him and listen to his story. It's pretty amazing. Wilkinson here. Today my guest is Matthew Mitchell. Say hi, Matthew. Hi, Matthew. <laughs> oh, that's that's a new one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, I could introduce you, but I think you should introduce yourself. You're into so many things. It's amazing. Let's let's hear what you do. Oh wow. My name is Matthew Mitchell. I'm a photographer. Uh, just a creator. I'd like to say I am a creative force. That's what I'd like to say. But I, I have my hands in many things from dancing, uh, art direction, makeup, photography, of course, uh, writing copy, just doing anything I can to be creative. And let's see, you were, I know you're in LA. Were you in New York before that? I'm forgetting. I was in New York for 10 months. I arrived there in February and Ooh. it was still snowing past my birthday, which is March. Uh -oh. And in the beginning of that summer, there was a taxi strike, and then there was a garbage strike, and there were mountains of trash on the streets and massive rats, and that was followed by brownouts. And I decided by the time November came that I did not want to do it all again. So, so you, did you go from New York to LA then? I went f from... Portland, Oregon, to New York, back to Portland. And I said I would never move to Los Angeles, where I have recently just finished spending 27 years. So so never say never. Never say never. And now where are you? Palm Springs. I want to say sunny Palm Springs, but well, it's it is, sunny today. Today it is sunny <laughs> and it's getting warmer and that makes me happy. But the cold and the wet and the wind last night, geez. It was Boy. a blustery. It was blustery, yeah, wasn't it? It was. So what did you do in LA? Same thing I do. You know. What did you do the most? I'm going to tie you down here a little bit. I, I, well, for I'll try. It's, well, I, I think my anchor has always been photography, uh -huh. um, working with people. I feel like taking photos and doing makeup and making people look good is like delivering flowers. No one's ever mad at you. You're good news. Right. And as lofty as they may be, I'm helping people go for their dreams. If you're going to be a writer or a chef or an actor or a model, if you're going to write a book, the artwork that we do together, which makes you feel better about yourself, you feel better presenting yourself for whatever the next project's going to be. And I've always found that very powerful. So you like helping people? I like helping people. Giving is living. Right. What kind of gigs were you on photography-wise in LA? Everything from taking photos of young aspiring actors to working with A-list actors like Eva Longoria, uh, Leighton Meester, all the list goes on. I wound up being an on-camera photographer. So on shows like The Bachelor, and then I was on a show called How to Look Good Naked with Carson Kressley, and we wound up going to Oprah, and that was a great experience. How was Oprah in real life? I think the persona that she creates for camera, surprisingly, is not the woman you meet backstage. Really? The woman I met backstage had a house coat on and slippers. <laughs> <laughs> and oh uh, I think it's much like meeting the queen. They, right. There's a little bit of a dissertation that goes along with it. Right. Uh, we were told not to stare her down, not to size her up, not to race at her and hug her or be the first one to initiate a handshake. She will initiate all that if that's what she's feeling. But I understand it. If you are pre-makeup or post-makeup and you're trying to get into your job for the day and you feel eyes looking at you and we're all naturally I think a little insecure or we question what we've done or we may not feel 100% every single moment you don't need that distraction of someone looking at you and side-eyeing you and whispering to their friends and they may be saying wonderful things about you but mm. you just don't need to pull your right. energy and your focus from what your task is and I think becoming Oprah Right. For the camera is something that takes a little bit of a, you know, a little bit of a, a walk to a steady little jaunt to a run because she has to be running at it. She has to give you that full force of what she does. Huh. I did not think that she liked our content of our show. Well, I was going to just ask. That was my next question. So what was your content? The show was the premise of the show was a, a British show called How to Look Good Naked. And you they took women 
of various sizes and shapes. And these were women that had um, complexes or they had very major issues. Self-image. Self-image self image right. issues. So they, a woman wouldn't go to her daughter's wedding or she wouldn't go to any of parties or she became reclusive and isolated because she wasn't the young, beautiful girl that she once was. And Carson would gracefully and artfully point out that she is letting joy and life and her family pass her by while she's only concerned about 13 inches of her thigh. And they would take a woman and she would, they'd line up a whole bunch of women that kind of were her shape. And they would have the women go stand right between where they thought they landed. And 100% of the time, they always considered themselves bigger than what they really were. And really? these other women who were standing there in the bra and panties would talk to them and they would celebrate who they were. And I think that sometimes is what, that sometimes is what we need. And that's what the show is right. about is showing that you can celebrate. And maybe you need a bra whisper and maybe you need a little bit of a makeover. And there's nothing like a jump start that a guy, a gay guy can do for you. That's for sure. <laughs> and right. uh, at the end, there was a photo and they were naked, but they were draped, obviously. I would take those photos and then they would, somewhere in Hollywood, they would put them on a billboard or on the side of a building for everyone to see. Really? And yes. And then they would stop people to ask what they thought. And Oh, so they would film that? When they would doing film that. That. Okay. that was part of the experience. You know, okay. the woman would see herself six stories high, but it's a beautiful photo. Right. And then people were, women would celebrate it and men would celebrate it. There was a woman who was a fashion editor, and I forget for what magazine, New York, and they padded her up. She was a very thin woman, and she lived by salad and coffee, you right. know, most of the day. Right, right. And I think she had been a former model. And they padded her up to have curves. And she walked around the city, and they recorded the responses of men. And men held the door open for her and called her beautiful, and not necessarily catcalled, but treated her in the, it, it celebrated her as a woman, as this curvy woman that she had always tried to avoid. And after that, they interviewed her and she's like, I have never been so seen in my life. Wow. I, and by the end of the day, she had kind of warmed up. There was something warmer about that experience for her. So, but for all of us, and you know, especially. So gay, she said, bring me chocolate cake. Bring me chocolate cake. <laughs> Let them eat chocolate cake. So did she have body dysmorphia, do you think? Or was it not that full blown? I think. I don't think it's body dysmorphia. I think we are magazines, media, social media, show us this ideal that is partially genetics and partially hard work and diet and youth. And they use that as the marker for, for what our worth is. Right. And unfortunately, so many of us buy into it. So in your photography career... I assume you've photograph. Do you photograph? You photograph all kinds of people. All uh, kinds of people. Since you're gay, you probably photographed a lot of guys, correct? I have been known. So, do you like doing the perfect model types, or do you like doing what I would call the real, the real guys? Which do you have a preference? I like everything, and I get bored by. I love pizza, but I can't have it seven days a week. I enjoy the cathartic and holistically therapeutic work when I put makeup on a woman, make her more beautiful, bring out her beauty or lift. That's an amazing thing for me. And so I'm, you like that better than photographing no, guys? No, no, no. Or just, I'm, I'm it's saying, another thing. That's another thing. And I right. love it. Okay. Uh, and then there's something else with, with men and the sensuality, masculine sensuality, that, that that's what I like personally. There's something else about that, uh, but they're two completely different things. Oh. I like Ooh. making people look beautiful and comfortable, feel comfortable and feel like they're celebrated. In this very moment, in this very moment, they will forever be that age, all of those right. things, and they will have some pampering and some attention and excellent lighting, if I might say so <laughs> myself, uh, you know, and I, and right. I know my tools and my craft enough to n not shoot someone with too wide of a lens and too close, but to, how to make people look the best. And I think that's one right. of the reasons I've had whatever level of success oh. I've had. So you left LA. I left LA. When? The beginning of pandemic, I got a tip off that maybe I should come to Palm Springs and I got some help leasing out my place in LA. I had already rented a little two bedroom here to get away from Los Angeles. So I had a place to go and luckily everything fell into place. And what are you doing here? Um, today I'm having a podcast, podcast interview. interview. Yeah. yeah. But on the other days, what do you do? What do I do? What do I do with my time or what's yeah. my intention? Both. Okay. My time, 
my time, the, the gym, being creative, being present in a, a fairly new relationship, enjoying, well, it, it's a challenge of trying to make a new tribe here, trying to create friends and a support group. So all that is like sleep, enough rest or right. eating well or having having the right amount of exercise and you know and stimulation for everything so all that is my new experience after being in after crafting a really wonderful life in los angeles for so long uh some of my friends who live there like my best friend and his partner moved back to portland oregon and other friends moved away so it was a real shake up for me so i think i'm still finding my footing here so your tribe there broke up yeah well 25 years of working hard at being being true to my craft, uh, being honest and fair and on time and articulate and all those things that you do to try and, and be respected, uh, all of those business relationships kind of went away. And then it's to start over again. I already started over once in two, right after the 2008 crash. And so- Did it go away because of uh, what? Because of pandemic, yeah. People left, people changed careers. I think once you leave Los Angeles and then you come back, you realize how difficult it is as a daily exercise to go from my place uh, at the south end of Hancock Park to Barry's Boot Camp in uh, West Hollywood. Should be a, a 11 to 15 minute drive. It is 40 minutes in the morning and then you work out for an hour and then you're taking another 30, 40 minutes to get home. That's that's a commitment in time. and And now I realize it's a bit of a waste of time. So now I'm here, I'm celebrating no parking meters and getting some play. I got here today Shh, in don't, six minutes. Don't give the city council okay. any ideas. Okay. And uh, <laughs> uh, the snowbirds, we love those. <laughs> I, I'm enjoying this new discovery and I like, I've never had a problem with change. I don't fear it. I, I just, I, I think it really tests who I am. When you came here, you talked about so talking about community. Do you do you feel it's hard to break in here? Is it are people more friendly than LA or what? What how does Palm Springs how's it treated you? Oranges and apples. It's it's different. There's no but there are yeah. it is smaller. Uh, I go to my gym and I see that I've made casual acquaintances with people and I get invited to their pool parties and I see them at their pool parties. I go to Billy Reed's. Without them, I would starve. And I see the same people. And then I go to another event or we go out. It's you. It's like a, a high school. I see all the same people at all of the same events, which is wonderful because I like most of these people. Right. There is a lack of diversity. And that is what it is. It's not. And that's something I miss. But I'm also, I'm turning 55. Well, you know, I. there are three, there are three keys to, to staying young. Get lots of rest, laugh a lot, and lie about your age. But I decided not to lie about my age anymore. I'm kind of, I'm celebrating this. What about moisturizing? And I think that, yeah, there's moisturizing, there's getting enough rest, there's, you know, exercise, but. Yeah. So Billy Reads, is it the food, the service, or the oak furniture that you like the best? Well. Or the knickknacks, which one? I don't <laughs> traditionally like knickknacks. Their I place is very clean, though. It's clean. Very yeah. clean. The glass is clean, and I'm, I'm fastidious. Like, I look at stuff and I see, like, you know, it's, there's a kitchen, right? right within you know it's wallace kitchen right there and there's no grease grime anywhere for for as knickknacky as it is or as right. antiquey as it is i find the quality of food to be good i find the service to they're very friendly right. they greet me like i am a friend and when i am gone they ask me where i've been so wow. yeah i i find them to be very very nice i feel a bit at home there a bit at homo there no a bit at home the the decor bothers me. The rest is great, but I, I don't just know. accept it for what That's it is. That's part of my past in New York, and I, it's like, ugh. <laughs> well, I would rather that than have some place look snazzy and fancy, and then have poor quality food, poor service, and I get it. Be, yeah. So, right. the, and when I say diver a lack of diversity, there's a lack of diversity in f in restaurants here too. There's some great restaurants, but I think it was Sunday, two o'clock. We wanted to grab something. And we're in downtown, and Cheeky's was closing at two, and uh, Jake's was closing at two. So there's a little, and you just learn this, and you adapt, and you know this is just dining out, so it's nothing, nothing critical. Right. But I miss the canters at whatever time, at literally at three a.m. If right. if you've been shooting all day on a job, 
and we get back and we're starving, I can literally go in at any time because they're open 24 hours. And it's a great little Jewish deli. And I have my favorite gal, and I can't remember her name now. And I sit in the back. I have this one booth that I love. But that's part of what I like. I like familiarity uh, right. because it it equates to reliability. And I'm not really good at surprises. I don't mind change. I'm not good at surprises. So unless it's a surprise. and then. So you said you have a guy. I have a guy. Named Wiley. Named Wiley. Love Wiley that. in the Wild. I love, I love that. That's a great name. It's a great name. Yeah. And it, it is a great name. He's great, named after his grandfather. But I just think how lucky he got. People remember his name. And then I get Michael, right? I'm like, no, it's, it's Matthew. But I get that I am completely eclipsed by how charismatic Wiley. his name is. Right. So. Well, that's one reason why I dropped Jim a year ago. And I'm going by Wilkinson. Because it's oh. more, it's more memorable, and I, I think it just fits in this stage. So, that's why I did it. Well, you can be, you can be who you want to be. Yeah. At eighteen, I wanted to change my name to Maxwell. Oh no, Maxmillion. I wanted to change my name to Maxmillion and go by Max Two X's because I would double cross you. I don't know. It's just a silly <laughs> thing I thought of. And a girl I went to college with talked me out of it. She said it was a cliche. Damn her. Damn her. I think Maxwell would have been great. Any of those things. Yeah. I just don't find Matthew to be the most. Right. And, and Matthew Mitchell becomes Michael. So much. Really? There's yeah. so many gay Michaels. So many gay Michaels. <laughs> what do you like about Wiley? Hmm. And where did you meet him? Well, we'll start, start with where start, I start, We'll start with where I met him. Okay. During pandemic, during COVID, a friend of mine, Chris, Chris Wang, Wang, who had taken photos of a beautiful man, had a group of guys that got together for hiking on Saturdays or Sundays in the morning. And I had gone for months. And one day, this guy shows up and I was talking to someone. I said, oh, he's cute. And, um, you know, that was it. And I think the guy next to me said, oh, he's a bit young for me. Yeah, Cause you know, that's how we do things. We make things about us. Right. So I just <laughs> left it alone. I turned my back for a second and that guy made a beeline to go talk to him. So I'm like, I'm not here to compete for anyone's attention. Right. And I usually hike faster and I like to run. I used to at least. So I get ahead of the group. I just took off. During the hike, I could hear this guy who would be Wiley chatting and chatting and chatting the whole way up. And I thought, wow, he likes to talk. He's chatty. I'm, I dodged a bullet with that one. Really? Yeah. And then the next week, I didn't go hiking. And the week after, I wound up going hiking. But it was just Chris, myself, and Wiley. Ooh, the So it was just the, th the three of us. And we went on a nice hike. And, and the restaurants had just opened up. So we went to, guess where? Billy Reed's. We sat outside and we had breakfast. We had brunch. This and is after the hike? This is after the hike. Okay. And Wiley, traditionally, because he had bought a condo, he was 29 at the time, and he just bought a condo, was watching his, he was budget, he was very conscious. Of conscious his of his, yeah, what, yeah, yeah. But he decided he would want to do something social. So we went to brunch, and he sat next to me. And before I realized it, my I had somewhere, we were talking, and my whole body had turned towards him, and I had put my hand, my arm on the back of his chair. And I thought to myself, what do you, because that's not me. No. That's just not my style. No. I play coy and I give you a bad time and right. almost borderline mean to people if I'm attracted to them. I just, I tease them. It just, that's just what I do. Right. I put up a fight and, right. you know, and if it works, it's because, okay, they can get me. I think it's right. a bit of a, it's a, a marker for me. Okay. It's a, a litmus test. Okay. Uh, so, but in this, my arms around around his chair and after breakfast, and I, I, I was a very aware of this unusual behavior. And I said, my body must know something I don't. Right. And afterwards I said, hey, I'm being hired to serve drinks in my underwear for a Christmas party tonight. Would you like to come be, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a naughty, el not an elf, I'm a r naughty reindeer. Would you like to be like a Santa or something? And he said, sure. So he came, he sent me photos throughout the day with various little outfits on, and he, he got there. Uh, I met him outside in the car. He was in the car, and he changed in front of me out there. And I'm like, ding, ding, ding. Uh, he came in. We served drinks. Uh, he got a little toasty. I followed him home, and the rest is history. Wow. I can't wait for the movie to come out. Oh, gosh. gosh. <laughs> and I feel a little guilty how how happy I am and how in love i am i try and tone it down around people right you know people go how long you how how long have you been together and i held up two fingers and they're, they're like two years i go too long just because i you know i feel i'm very self-conscious of the fact of like oh look at those two can they keep their hands off each other and now i'm that couple now do you live together yet or no we live together 
Huh. In his condo or in your place? He moved into my little apartment and he's, okay. you know, he, he understands, he's a, he's studying for a CPA license. So he understands money. He's leasing out his place and it allow, gives us some freedom. And, um, but when he moved in, he didn't want to say he was moving in. He wanted to say that he's staying with me. When we first started dating, he didn't want to call each other boyfriends. He wanted to say that we were dating. Just, you know, we, 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 we deal with these things and that's just. Does he look at things like kind of in an old fashioned way or what, or what is that? What's that all about? I'm his first boyfriend. Oh, he's really? 31. Yeah. He was 29 when I met him and I'm his first boyfriend. I think a lot of it is just unfamiliar territory and anxiety. I think he's riddled with anxiety from time to time about different things. And he internalizes and he has a tendency. He's being very good about not time traveling, but uh, these are all things that you have. And when you're on your own, it's fine. But when you, you start to partner, you have to be mindful of all these things. And I think it was a little overwhelming for him at first. Also coupled by... I think his feelings, you know, finding, finding someone, I think he at one point had resolved that he was probably never going to find anyone. He'd never had a Valentine when I met him. He never really? got, he only gotten cards from his mom. He, oh. uh, yeah. So, and other things that made him feel that he was disenfranchised from the whole gay thing. That yeah. surprises me because I've, I've seen pictures of him. I haven't met him yet, but. But it's more than just the outside the looks, package. Yeah, it's yeah. how. After a while, if the world treats you a certain way, you might begin to believe it. So, so what now? Tell me what you like about him. What do I love about him? What do you love about him? That booty. Uh, he is. <laughs> oh, really? I mean, besides the physical stuff, right? I, I just those brown eyes melt me. His eyes are a little bit like um, Liza Minnelli or uh, uh, Sylvester Stallone. So they're wow. they're brown. They're big and. The brows turn down on the ends, and there's just something about it. I love how I'm an artist. And when I say drama, I don't mean like serious drama, but I make up drama almost over everything. If something is good and yummy, I can I hyperbolate and make it the most amazing experience of its life. If things are frustrating, I, you know, I, 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 I'm very expressive. He is not. <laughs> no? <laughs> no. Well, you said CPA, so that, yeah, that makes he's, sense. He's yeah, he's very lineal. And... It's that consistency, but he's why I won't say mature. He's wise for his age. He has taken whatever challenges that he has, and he has dealt with them head on without too much denial or too much explaining or trying to give excuses for why you know I, I am this way because of this. It is why well, I, I, I he can do better. He even said it last night in a conversation. We were talking about we're a monogamous couple. I have everything I need. There's nothing to change. Is there a possibility? Yes. But in our conversation last night, he looks at things is in how he could do better. And it's and it wasn't a pitch. He wasn't coming at me or saying these things so he can get his way. It was just a conversation. And it's very rare that I've uh, that I meet people that really want to do better. So it's all of these things and so much more. There's a, there's a light in him that I see from time to time that is so magnanimous, so radiant, and mm. so brilliant that if he learned how to harness it, when he learns how to harness it, he'll be unstoppable. But he's fairly unstoppable once he sets his mind to stuff anyway. But there's this, there's this charisma, a quiet charisma right. about him. So this is a moment when I regret not being on video because if my listeners could see you right now, you're glowing as you oh, talk about stop. it. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to take off my jacket. Now I'm no, warm. Now you really are. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> thanks. But huh. we, he's the most tactile partner I've ever had. Cool. We hold hands constantly. We hold hands while we sleep. Not all night long, but right. it's just I've never... I'm very tactile. So it's it's something... It's part of our bonding. There's just something very nurturing. And it's male bonding. It's There's something really wonderful about this relationship in its in the simplest forms it's exercises throughout the day when we wake up there's a there's you know morning snuggles and there's all these things there's just very there's a lot of nurturing that just feels it feels healthy and it just feels you know it's not just crazy monkey sex it's right. just all this stuff that's very caring and so and you can't do that on the physical level if you don't feel it on the emotional level. And if you don't feel safe, it doesn't manifest itself this way. Right. Or if you have your eye on the door looking for the next best, next 
best or better thing, you don't manifest it like or this. Or the next in the meantime. Thing. Yeah, and yeah. all that. There isn't, there's not, I, I don't feel a distraction from him that I have historically with other wonderful men. But, you know, in, in last night's conversation, uh, he says he want, he acknowledged that sometimes it feels like there's something broken or wrong with us because because, we, like because of it. Right. And it's, no. I'm not, I'm not a casual man. I'm not right. good at being casual. And who are you competing with anyway? Yeah, and that's it. And this yeah. isn't, we had someone we know send us, we, we posted something for Valentine's Day and the person commented and paid us a compliment. And I said, oh, he makes me look good. And he's like, oh, you both look good. Uh, and referred to a certain photo and then said, hey, if you guys, I would love to have fun or play, play or have fun with you guys if you ever wanted. And that's very nice. It was very upfront and direct. And I'm, I'm telling him everything that's going on. I don't want to have secrets. And I said, you know, I think it was play. And I said, oh, or play or fun? Maybe it was fun. I said, oh, fun. Uh, we love to go on hikes and we love board games. We don't really love board <laughs> games. So and it was, I got a laugh, but I kind of diffused right. it without explaining too much because I don't feel the need to. Right. Uh, but this started the whole conversation about monogamy again and what it would look like if it were ever to explore differences. Now, we have had micro things happen uh without detail but you know and we we traveled to europe for almost a month and we went to a sex club but it was for us it wasn't it wasn't for anything else and we understood in the situation we were in that hands were trying to come over and you just you politely excuse it or push it away and you continue what you're doing and then we found finding a room for the two of us was the best thing you know because it was a different environment right. it wasn't particularly comfortable but it wasn't uncomfortable it was thin walls and and lots and you know and full expression but it, it felt safe um so right. i love that he is willing to explore and try new things but there isn't a need for a dopamine rush because right. people like your photo or because right. someone you know had their eyes on you at the gym or whatever right. it's it I, I i feel it relays that he is healthier on that level how about the age difference? Is that any any issues come up on that? Well, besides tell, being, or I've already told my real age, I usually say I'm close to 31, but that's usually <laughs> when I'm standing right next to him. In the beginning, for him, I've asked him, in the beginning for him, I think he had some... Like, can I do this type of thing? Or just, or, or... I think he had to wrap his mind around it. I'm lucky I look younger than I am. Right. I, I think also his lack of experience because of how his life has unfolded and my experience through my life, I think they've helped. They, they, I think that helps a juxtaposition. Right. Um, I'm not here to be his, his dad. I'm right. not here to be his therapist or anything, you know. So he doesn't call you daddy? No, he doesn't call me daddy. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I, I have called him daddy a couple of times just to be out of funny. Right. Uh, you know, so oh. I treat him more like the daddy in, in, in just be, to be, I don't know. I just do it obviously because it's to call him boy, I think is the obvious right. thing to do. So I do the opposite. So what are you doing here in Palm Springs? You have a studio, you said. I am opening a photo studio in downtown. Downtown. When, when will it open? Well, technically it is open. Okay. I've had a couple of shoots there. I recently cut all ties with Los Angeles. I, and, and when I say all ties, I moved out of my place there that I lived in for 12 years. And my photo studio, which was part of my property, about two garages worth. And I've moved everything here. And as Wiley says, we live in a clown car. So our little two-bedroom apartment is packed right now. I have more than enough furniture and I have custom furniture from Los Angeles that I don't necessarily want to get rid of, but I don't know what to do with. And then I have all these things, props and wardrobe and lighting and grip, all this equipment in my studio. I have, as of last night, I have it fairly assembled into some type of order because I guess chaos is an order too. I have everything in boxes stacked in this, what should be the I guess might be the bathroom once I put it in. But right now it's a closet. Uh, and I'm discovering how to make all this work. But if we had to shoot today, I could make it happen. And what what's going to be your focus at the studio? Photos. I think who my clients will be, obviously real estate agents, people who need a beautiful, quality, well-lit, amazing photography. Uh, you know, that's that's certainly the, the norm. Um, I shoot for a little magazine called Forbes, uh, or was, and I still am a little bit. So I've shot everything from travel to product to fashion, of course, uh, headshots, beauty campaigns, advertising. Uh, I wrote copy for the, for the um, beauty industry for several years. So all of this kind of 
is an amalgamation of everything right. I can do. Uh, I took photos of the NBA wives for a while while I was there. And that was a really great experience. And I hope to replicate that here. And that's going into the homes of women and giving them a full beauty treatment with makeup and wardrobe and lighting it. And I now, did every- do you do all that or do you have other people on your team? Uh, in LA, I had one other person on my team. I usually okay. have at least one person. I'll do makeup because I'm just very picky about what I do. And I, and I do, and then it's also, I'm literally standing between their knees putting on makeup. It's very intimate. And there's just the moment they pick up the mirror and they're like, and it's for camera. It's not, for going to the grocery store. It's, you know, right. if they were on stage, this is it. But there is something about the way I do makeup that makes them, I so just it's shot. kind of magical. Yeah, yeah, I just took, did photos uh, for DAP Health's magazine of Keisha D, who's a jazz singer in town. And the photos are beautiful. And it is a gorgeous cover. And it's Steve right. uh, asked me to do it. And he, he asked me to do it because of what I do. Because I do this beautiful Hollywood glamorous beauty ca- cover campaign type look easily because that's just in my wheelhouse so i want to replicate what that is and i don't care if you're 22 or 82 or 92 if you want a beautiful photo and you want to experience and and you want to celebrate what god has given you or the universe has given you then that's what i'm here to do and i'm here to put it i would say on paper but it's you know at virtual it's you know it's right. on a on a flash drive you put on your oh. computer it's it's an amazing gift anyone can give themselves and it's it's there's nothing like a beautiful photo you know you you take photos so right. there's it's really empowering but it's also the experience like going to a day spa is therapeutic and it's it's nurturing it's healthy and it's self-love this is too but you can show everybody so do you have a date for official opening or I know you can do it now, but you're gonna are you gonna do an opening or just I will kinda I happen? will I will I just sent my my best friend's husband who's you know uh, all the information to make a business card. So I thought, okay, as soon as I get the business card, I'm gonna we're gonna put all we're gonna put all this together and it's going to meet at some corner. I do not have a date as of yet. I have a a couple things going on, so I keep trying to balance this all out. But I, I'm. I'm not impatient and I'm not right. in a hurry. I'd rather it be right, right than just be, you know, and I hate, I hate, I hate setting a date and then going, oh, well, that didn't work because that looks like I can't manage time. And that would, right. you know, so it's like, oh, let's see how this goes. And I, you know, I'm having nine foot windows cut in my, in two of them cuts because I need light. Without light and beautiful light, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little behind the eight ball on that. So uh, for me, that's the priority. So you're going to cut the front windows in? Cut, yes. And that, that is your studio? Are people going to be able to look in as you're shooting? No. Okay. Um, there's a space 370 North Palm Canyon, which is the Modernism Museum. Okay. Or maybe that's Woody's address. Uh, I am just south of that. A little hidden door, which I will put a big... I'll put a big B on it because it's 370B. And I'll put some some stuff there so if people can see that it's my studio. But you wouldn't know I'm there if you didn't see that little door. I am down that corridor to the side, the to the south side of that building. And there's a 1,400 square foot studio space there. And that's mine. That's a nice size. It's good size. Really nice. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So what else do you have coming up? I have a brolesque show. Mr. Pink is my alter ego for Boylesque. And then I have a group of dancers coming in for, from Los Angeles uh, on March 4th, which happens to be my birthday, uh, for a show at The Roost. They're doing a music festival that weekend, sponsored and promoted by my friends at GED Magazine. And they're going to have singers and performers. And on Saturday evening, we're going to do a burlesque show, like just shy of an hour. So are there going to be ticket sales for that? Or? There will be ticket sales. I do not have the information in front of me. I should grab that, uh, but I'm sure there'll be links in your show notes. Look and listen to me. Wow, I sound like I've done a podcast before. Well, I might have to juggle something because I think we're we're Pen recording for a day. we're recording this right day after uh, Valentine's Day. But I think I said March fifteenth was your original date, which would be after that. Maybe I can squish in somewhere else and Or if you have a link to a time machine, then that might solve the problem. And if you do, I might need it for some other things. We'll figure something out. All right. Yeah, you can give me a lot of info and put it in the show notes. 
So, yes, it's been fun meeting you. This has been wonderful. Wait, wait, wait. I'm not going to end yet. Okay. I want to hear your coming out story. Is there one? I came out very late. I Is might it? have been 28 or 29 months old. <laughs> My eyebrows just went up. <laughs> I, I threw you. Yeah. I pointed you in one direction. I... Was ce- I was raised by my grandmother, so I was celebrated. I was told early on that I was an artist child, and my grandmother had always wanted an artist, and she finally got one. But with that came me wanting to play with dolls and liking frilly frocks and and makeup and fashion magazines. Oh. And very young, I didn't understand. I knew Vogue and Glamour, and they had... Not only did they have women on the cover, and no, a Cosmopolitan had like very risque women, like plunging necklines. And they also had subjects in there about, you know, tricks for a better orgasm and all these things that were very in the 70s, you know, right. but that's what women talked about. I wasn't Pre, pre internet. Yeah, yeah, I wasn't yeah. allowed to look at Cosmopolitan. And so I kind of took that as the general that I wasn't supposed to look at any of these for because they're for women. And there was like this weird code or there's information that guys shouldn't know i would sneak my a girl a girlfriend of mine uh her mom had vogues and she would give them to me and i would sneak them into my room and look at them i didn't hide you know playboy playgirl i hid vogue you know but i was fascinated by all of it i was fascinated i was also fascinated by uh i had i'd seen something about a penthouse a penthouse not penthouse magazine a penthouse that was the top floor and they were fabulously decorated and so I wanted my bedroom to be a penthouse. And so I started gathering. Wait, how, the, how old are you here? Oh, I'm seven, eight. Like it oh, started wow. early. <laughs> I would stack books and I wanted a um, a figurine, like a, a, a bust of a, a like a, a head of a man, you know. Right. And on so, top of the stack of books. On top. Yeah. And there are all these little things. And I loved little bowls. It's just, it's weird. I was a weird kid. So my grandmother knew, but she celebrated with me. She encouraged me to just do whatever I wanted to do. And she had a man, a very burly man. I was friends with his son in school. He came and built a plywood Barbie dream house for me. I didn't want like what the girls had. They would have a pink little thing that was made of plastic and it looked fake to me. And you it wanted just, a real little house. I Come wanted on. something with some integrity. Yeah. I wanted an elevator. We couldn't get an elevator. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, I know. Uh, and then, uh, so he came and they they put carpet in it and they put some... Uh, some linoleum in one so I could have, because a kitchen should have a linoleum in the second right. floor, which is that entertainment should have a, at the time. Carp, it was just, I was a ridiculous kid. Now, but, this wasn't something you could go into. It wasn't that a big thing. No, like no, that. no. This but was I could, a mo- like a model of yeah. a house. Yeah, yeah, I okay. also took um, my hair. I had black curly hair. And I took super glue and put a bush on Barbie. I took the end of a number two pencil and pulled out the eraser. And I super glued that to Ken because I wanted everything to be as realistic. And I honestly don't even know where I got this information. But the wait, wait, wait. The eraser was a bulge. Was his what? dick? Oh, I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> his penis. Yeah, but wow. it, yeah, take the girth of a number two pencil and put it on a Ken doll. So my grandma was very amused by by that. Uh, we well, has to be anatomically correct, yeah, right? Yeah, and yeah. So I wasn't really aware of all this stuff, but it was these are all things that I, I insisted upon for my little make-believe world. And I was always in a fantasy world, and I took ballet. I tried to take tap. I didn't like it, but I took ballet for a while, stopped, and then took ballet again, and... Um, you know. So that's the background on coming out. When did you actually come out? Oh, yeah. That's the, this is the buildup. Yeah. Uh, I didn't come out until... At 19, I moved to Paris. I Good for you. Yeah, yeah. I took a year. I did a study abroad, and I actually didn't go to college. I just kind of, whatever. I just, I don't know it's what it is. It's kind of overrated, my opinion. Yeah, idea. yeah, well. Yeah. I, a person that was a, a, I was represented as a little kid by the kids division at LA Models. And I didn't want to hang out with other kids. I wanted to go, during pilot season, I would go to the agency and hang out. Uh, Bill Arndt was the agent there and these beautiful men and beautiful women that seemed so tall and everything would come in I would help be color photocopy their portfolios and put them into books and get them ready for it. just I did everything I could this is age what uh, this is 13 14, 13 14, okay 14 
And so, and a model scout that came in, his name was Nicholas Fiani from Ava Models. And I kind of knew him for several years until I opened it. Yeah, I knew him for several years. So after high, about the time I was going to graduate, he's like, you should come to Paris. I think he just, you, it's one of those nice things that you say. So I did. <laughs> and I showed up at his office, Ava Models. And he's like, you don't speak French. I'm like, no. He goes, I can't get you a job here. And he goes, I do have, there's a job available in a showroom at Givenchy, a showroom where they just need someone to literally pick up the clothes and to like, just the houseboy, like that's all. Right. And they, it was private shopping for wealthy women. And so okay. the models would come in and they would do their shows and I would help with the clothing. And, you know, uh, I wound up being in a relationship with someone from all that. And that's kind of, I came out, I came out because I was in this relationship and it seemed very natural. Right. Uh, and then when I got home to Los An or to Portland, Oregon, I still kind of dealt with it. It's the fear of your peers and the people that you know, but when you're out of town, you can act crazy and dance on tables. Right. Um, I came out to myself in France. Did That's you? really weird. Yeah. I, it wow. took me a minute to, it was a, it was a bit of a reveal. You know, I, it's the drama in me. It's right. the theatrical, like you take out, you peel off one layer and you show a little bit and you see what the response is and you do it. And I was doing, I was acting out at 18 after I graduated from high school. I didn't know if I was gay. I knew, and I had never had experience with really with sex with a man. I had some things that happened, but so I went to a porn bookstore and the lady uh, uh, you know an asian lady behind the counter i had questions for her because i didn't know who to ask <laughs> and she directed me to a thing called just out it was a, a paper magazine that was in portland and seattle but there were sisters and in the back were the personal ads and so she helped me look up a personal ad oh my god i looked him up <laughs> we called long distance from portland to seattle and i talked to martin and i didn't understand it gave measurements his measurements and i didn't I never were. really measured my chest, so I didn't know what a, a 42 with a three inch V, like I didn't, he, he gave it cause he had a big chest. I didn't know that. And so I booked a hotel, but I also booked to stay with him. But just in case I thought he was a creep, I was just going to stay in a hotel. I met him at uh, the Nordstrom in downtown and I went to the, the barista and I explained to her and she was a lesbian. I went to her and explained what I was doing. And she says, well, I'll keep an eye out for you. I'll hold your bag. And if I think this isn't right. I'll get you out of this. She goes, but just in because it's a small town, I will. So I ordered my coffee. He came, we got him something and she came over and she's like, oh, hey, Martin, how are you? Are you still in the, the gay man's choir? And she looks at me. He's, he's such a nice man. I knew it. I knew it was fine. So that was code. He's okay. I yeah. went home with him. I hadn't experienced anything. I was just so new. And <laughs> what would be normally bragging rights, but for me, it, it was it was certainly <laughs> an obstacle. He had won the largest man in in seattle at the cuffs bar where they had a, a hole in a piece of plywood and guys stuck themselves oh through and he had won now that year he didn't win the pre that, the, just that previous year he didn't win because he wasn't as full as he usually is because they had to wait he had a whole story of why he didn't win that year so he was massive and i tried my best at that and i'm a top uh, <laughs> So, but that was my first experience. I wanted to take, that's just my personality. I took it into my own hands. Right. <laughs> no pun intended. I took it into my own hands to curate this experience right. out of town so I could then see if I see if it felt right or if it was, right. I didn't know what it was. I would just see things in the media of men in harnesses and, and or hyper effeminate, not in real life, but as a character, as a, right. a, the joke of a sitcom. And I didn't think I was either one of those men and I didn't know where I fell. So I then went to college and denied it all, except for, you know, some drunken nights here and there. But after I came back from Paris, I had finally come to grips that this is something I could do. It's fascinating that those two women helped you. But that's a lot in my life, you know, I've just... So the universe sends you the right people at the right time. I think that's what it does for all of us. Yeah. I, you know. Um... Sometimes you don't recognize it though. We, we say things to the universe or like we, we want to be, away. yeah, or we say things to the universe like I want to be stronger and then it gives you challenges, not, you know what I mean? You're like, because it takes those challenges to be stronger. Right. And then you say things like I want to be wiser and then it gives you these other tests, not because it gives you wisdom, it gives you experiences to become wise. Right. And you say things like, you know, I want to love and then it weeds out people that are bad and then I have to then grapple and and figure out a way to just love myself. 
Right. And then the rest of it falls into place. I had an experience recently in Los Angeles and I had just said out loud to myself in the universe, I'm like, I just need some grace in this. And what came back to me is like, I needed to be that grace. I oh. needed to be the one that was understanding. So I'm like, okay, I'm going to accept whatever it is. I'm, you know, whatever. I'm going to be cooperative and everything changed. Literally the next day, everything changed and it became a smooth exit from Los Angeles because of all this. So yeah, that, but that, the things that we ask for don't necessarily come in the package we're looking for, right. but anyhow, I don't know how we got there. That's a good place to be. It's a great place to be. So looking back at your life thus far, yes. what are three main things you've learned? Can you come up with something? Oh, three, only three things. We'll have you back on again. You can talk about right. more next time. Three things. <laughs> well, giving, giving is living. Uh, and not the transactional, I did this for you, you need to do something for me. The giving. And then sometimes people just take and they burn and break and destroy on the way out. And you think, oh my gosh, why did I, do, what was, what's my lesson here? And I think naturally the knee-jerk response is to stop doing it. And I'm like, no, no, I was a good person in that. And I did what I was supposed to, I was the person that did what I'm supposed to do. The rest is on them. So giving is living and it doesn't, every, and the other thing is, what I desire right. is not necessarily the thing that's going to be good for me. So if I don't get it, Wiley and I went on a trip to Mammoth and we had bought scooters, these fast, expensive scooters. And by the time we got home, we were tired and someone forgot to lock the car door. And in the morning, someone had broken into the car and taken our scooters. Oh. And sure, you're upset about it and you think, I spent money on this and we really enjoy this. But I thought if the universe did this, so either one of us isn't laying on the pavement or has to deal with getting hit by a car or something. Getting hit could've, by, could've if, been if anything. this yeah. removes it because it's supposed to, it's taking care of us. I am fine with it. Right. And that's what gives me peace. So yeah. whatever we desire is not necessarily good for us. I try and accept too. I just try and it is what it is. Seems like such a cop out, but it's just like I'm armored with it. I weaponize that. I can handle whatever I'm being given. And it's for a reason. And if I don't find my lesson, I will probably repeat this. Exactly. And I don't own anybody. I don't own Wiley. Right. I, the celebration of our relationship for however long it lasts. That's what I need to focus on. I, I shouldn't time travel and go, we're monogamous now, but when I'm 70 and he's still young and we open it up, I'm going to be invisible. No, that's time traveling. And that's going to take away from what I have now. I try and accept for what I have, be grateful for it. And if there's lessons to learn, I've got a, I'm opinionated, I have a big mouth, I'm quick-witted, and I'm very verbal about way too much. And I realized my opinion, in, as a New Yorker, your opinion's fine. You just say whatever you need, and no one takes it personally. Los Angeles, you can be opinionated, but you better know what you're doing. It better be building something. If you're building a bridge to people or to success or to a team creatively, that's great. Or you're building an exit door for you to leave. Either one of those things. I also realize that Palm Springs is not girded the same way. And I'm having to adjust my... We're not ready for you? <laughs> no, I don't, no, I don't think that's it. I just think that's that's, I think it's a, it's a small town and people have had their time in corporate or jobs. And it's eased up here. I think people are still ambitious. They still have things right. to do. But it's not the same kind of intensity... New York is a different intensity than Los Angeles. And Los Angeles is a different intensity than many places. Right. And so part of what I love about this city is how easy it is, how friendly people are, and that they've lived their lives and they've been, let's just talk about gay men, they've either lived their lives with their partners or they've been married and, and they've had a corporate job, whatever they've done. And now it's all funneled to this moment where they can let go a little bit, right. exhale Breathe. and yeah. live. Right. And I still am wired to be a little bit of like, that's not right. If you want to, we should all do better. Oh, good God. I get it. But I don't, I don't have to prove anything anymore. Yeah. So that's part of my lesson. But accepting is what it is. Boy, boy, I just ramble. I realize that right now. So some might say I'm loquacious, but I realize that I just ramble. That's been a great interview. I've had a wonderful time. I've had great But we talked, like literally when I came the other day, we <laughs> sat for almost two hours and chatted and we almost chatted ourselves into starting this <laughs> 45 minutes late. So oh. I have a good time talking to you. Well, I'm going to have you back. All right, I'll be after back. After you open that studio and I better get an invite to the grand opening. You shall have the first invite. 
Well, Wiley will probably have the first invite. Well, he won't be an invitation. He'll be working. But anyway, you know what I mean. Thank you for coming in. Thank you for having me.